السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أمسينا وأمسى الملك لله والحمد لله لا شريك له لا إله إلا هو إليه النشور أمسينا على فطرة الإسلام وكلمة الإخلاص وعلى دين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى ملة أبينا إبراهيم حنيفا وما كان من المشركين اللهم أنا أمسينا منك في نعمة وعافية وستر فأتم علينا نعمتك وعافيتك وسترك في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما أمسى بنا من نعمة أو بأحد من خلقك فمنك وحدك لا شريك لك فلك الحمد ولك الشكر يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك رضينا بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد صلى الله عليه وسلم نبيا ورسولا أحبتي طبتم وطاب ممشاكم وتبوأتم من الجنة منزلا بإذن الله ثم ما بعد As you see our topic for tonight is all about zakah for American Muslims Zakah is a very long and, uh, and detailed topic and of course we need hours and hours sometimes even courses in the university to cover every single you know, uh, aspect of, of zakah and the differences between the scholars this is definitely will not be done tonight because we have only 45 minutes presentation and then I will open the floor for question and answer. We're going to finish everything, inshallah, before Salat al-Isha. Salat al-Isha will be at uh, 8 o'clock. So having said that, uh, as you see in the, in, the, in the title here, for American Muslims, of course, when it comes to zakat al zuru' wa thimar like agricultural products, we're going to skip it. Zakat al bahimat al-an'am, like um, if you have cattle or if you have uh, livestock, we're going to skip it and so on and so forth. We'll focus only on whatever. Uh, I would say related to us uh, American Muslims. Let's go briefly and start with the, with the fact that, that substituting zakah by taxes is insufficient. You need to consider paying tax to the government because you live in this society, because you work and you earn money, as well as you have to pay zakat al mal. Now, which one comes first? The, the, the recipients of the zakah, the recipients of the tax money are, you know, slightly or significantly different. We pay tax money, we benefit from our own tax money, some way, somehow. When it comes to zakat al-mal, basically the default rule is that you are not supposed to benefit from your zakah money, right? You are either a zakah payer or a zakah recipient or none of the above. Right? Like if you break even, for example, you do not have extra wealth to pay zakah, yet you are not that needy individual. You do not give zakah and you do not, you know, uh, 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 take zakah from, from other people. Uh, zakah is paid based on the remaining wealth. That's, that's, a, that's a good point. When you start filing for your tax, you start with the annual income how much you made in 2022, for example. You made $100,000 straight. So you report to the IRS 100,000. And of course, there are a lot of like deductions based on family members and payments if you have mortgage, if you have some other tuition fees, for example, for your undergraduate kids and so on and so forth. But you start the math. You start the math with the, with the total income. In our example, if you made $100,000 and you mark your calendar for the month of Ramadan, Okay, to be the zakat due date, where you pay zakat al-mal, and you ended up having only $20,000 remaining, still accessible, owned by you, then you start your math with how much? With, with 20000 only. So we do not care about how much you made. What we care about is how much you have, okay, owned exclusively by you, accessible to you in the zakat due date. You start your math from that, you know, figure amount on. Moving on, <clears throat> uh, a lot of details here, so I need to skip them. Okay, zakatable wealth. Zakatable wealth means what is to be included uh, in your zakat calculation. And of course, the very first category that belongs to all of us here is what we call it the personal zakatable wealth, which is, which is the cash. Okay, any kind of money, cash money that you have, 
whether in your checking account, in your saving account, uh, cash in hand, in your pocket, at home, with your wife, with your kids, as long as, as, as that money has been provided by you, right? Whether you received an income tax return from the government, stimulus check, unemployment, uh, sheriff payment, whatever, any kind, any kind of inheritance money that you inherited from other people, okay, that will be counted as, a, as, as cash, as an income, and it has to be, it has to be included. And then after that, we have the, the, the business category. What does it mean, business? Okay, we need to ask a question, what kind of business you have, right? Let's go with a very simple example. Someone has a car dealership or a grocery store. Anything that is counted as merchandise, as a commodity, as goods, anything that is for sale, right? Whether display items or an actual real item like on shelves for sale, or like even, even inventory, something that will be, will be sold in the future. Anything that is counted as urudu tijara, anything that is for sale, is to, be, is to be included and not to be excluded. Now, this means by default, otherwise is to be excluded, like all the tools, all the materials, all the devices, all the machineries that you use to run your business, right, are to be, are to be excluded. So we just focus on urudu tijara. Or tijara means the merchandise or the, or the commodity. Now, this is one kind of business. Another kind of business is what we call the exploited assets or rental properties in a very simple language. So business zakatable wealth, here we go. As you see here, trading goods, merchandise, exploited assets, we call it zakat al-mustaghallat. It's a kind of business where the actual, actual business, actual product is not for sale. However, you generate money out of using it. Very good example, taxi cab. Someone has a taxi cab. That vehicle itself is not for sale. So even, even if it is like very valuable, 100,000 or more, you don't have to pay the account. You pay the account on the money generated out of providing transportation service. Somebody else has a rental property. You have a house that you live in and another house that is for rent. As long as that rental property is rented okay, and you make money, the least revenue is the zakatable one, regardless of the market value of the, of the house itself. By the way, if you change your mind later on, and instead of having that property as a rental property, you just remove that sign for rent and you put another sign for, for sale. As long as you put it in the market, active in the market, then you have to pay zakah on the market value of the house on an annual basis, whether the house is sold or not. So the market value of the house is half a million dollars. Okay, you put it for sale in the month of uh, Ramadan 2023, 1444, right? If that house for some reason is not sold until Ramadan of next year, you still have the house, still active in the market, you still have your own real estate agent waiting for potential buyers, right? And the house is not sold. How much is the market value of the house next Ramadan? Oh, it went up to 550, you pay the car on 550. It went down to only $400,000 for whatever reason it might be, you pay the car on $400,000 and so on and so forth. Why? Because the house in this case, in this scenario, became a it became like a property for sale. No difference between the house in this case and the cars that you have in your lot if you have a, a car dealership or the groceries, like the grocery items that you have in a grocery store and so on and so forth. Moving on, agriculture products, we're gonna uh, uh, skip it. Livestock, we're gonna skip it. Treasure troves, we're gonna skip it. Okay, okay. Here is, here is a qaida or, or a fiqh maxim here which is zakat is potentially due on all products whose sources are not zakatable, which means there is no scenario where you have to pay zakat on the source of the income or the you know, profit or the money that you generate, as well as on the profit itself. It's either or. 
Okay. La, la thina fi sadaqah, according to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, it has more than one interpretation. One interpretation is that you are not supposed to pay your zakah more than once a year, more than once a year. And the second interpretation, you don't have to pay zakah on the source. You see here, we have products and we have source. Product and source. Let's take, for example, agricultural products. Do you have to pay zakah on the, on, on the land itself? You don't have to. Why? Because you pay zakah on the agricultural products. Okay. Now you have a cattle, for example. Okay. You have, let's say, 1,000 cows or, or, or buffalo. Are they zakatable or not? Yes, they are, of course. You have to pay zakah on them. What if you change your mind and you started using that cattle for dairy products purposes, right? From that point on, you don't have to pay zakah on the cattle, right? You pay zakah on the money that you make out of producing and selling and making money, you know, out of selling uh, uh, dairy products. So that's the meaning of lathina fi sadaqa. There is no duplication in taxation. It's either, either or. Take those examples here, dairy from livestock. You don't have to pay zakah on the livestock, you start paying you know, zakah on the dairy products. Eggs from poultry, even if you have one million chicken, right? Chicken is zakah exempt. But since you produce eggs and you sell and you make money, you pay zakah on the money that you generate out of producing eggs. Uh, silk from silkworms and so on and so forth. So the qaid actually applies to any kind of business where you have a source and you have a product. Source and product. Zakah actually it's, is either either to be paid on the source or otherwise on the product. And there is no scenario. Yeah, if you can, if you give me just half an hour, let me just present and I will open the floor for questions and answers. How about that? Deal? Fine. So it's either or. And it's not by choice, by the way. You now we go with the delil. We go with the, with the delil. Here, for example, we do have a hadith, although it's, it's not that authentic, that, that zakat al asal, okay, honey from, from bees, you pay zakat 10% on the profit that you make out of producing, out of producing uh, honey. Okay, zakat al rikaz. Now, non-zakatable wealth, I mean, whatever we covered is what to, be, what to be included. Now, what to be excluded here? Property for personal, personal, family, and non-commercial use. Anything that is not called as a business, anything that's not growable, right? You have a, a house, okay? Use it as a residential property for your personal use, right? So you're like, you know, primary residence. Even, even if it's worth $2 million, $3 million it's, it is okay, exempt. Even if you have more than one house, as long as the other house that you have maybe in a different state or even maybe back home, as long as that house is, is locked, it's not for sale, it's not for rent. It's just you know, locked throughout the whole year long until you go vacation every now and then. If that is the case, then the other house, other house actually is, is the cat exempt. So clothing, for example, even if you have more than what you need, by the way, even if you have more than what, of course, I mean, as a practicing Muslim, you are not supposed to lead an extravagant lifestyle, right? If you need only three cars for yourself, for your spouse and your son, you are not supposed to have six or seven cars, you see? However, if you, if you do have more than what you need, you will be held liable in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of being extravagant, because of the israf. But the fact that you have more than what you need does not make the excessive or the extra zakatable. Because actually the category, I mean, I mean the standard here is that is it for sale and making money or for your personal use? Personal use is a care exempt. Between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to make sure that you do not buy or purchase or own way more than what you, what you need. So residence, uh, transportation, clothing, food, whatever you have, everything actually is zakah. Okay, domestic animals, tools, devices. Okay, maybe some of you are doctors here. You have your own hospital, you have your own practice, your own clinic, right? All the machines and the tools and the devices that you use to run your business are zakat exempt. The only thing that is zakatable is the money that you generate, okay, out of like providing that you know healthcare service to your you know to your uh, patients. Property and public trust, anything that is not privately owned, uh, is not zakatable. Masjid, for example, even the awqaf, designated properties for endowment. If your masjid, for example, has a apartment complex, right? Uh, as an endowment fund for the masjid. So the, the least revenue actually is designated for the masjid. Everything actually is zakah, is zakah exempt. 
unlawful wealth لا سمح الله الله forbids if someone has stolen money or generated money out of like you know, dealing with uh, you know riba or was cheating or like through bribery bribed you know uh, uh, someone or received bribery from others any kind of haram money is zakah exempt zakah exempt in a sense that even if you pay zakah on it it will it will never be purified right the only thing actually is to return that money to its legitimate owner if that money is extorted like taken by force or stolen for example it has to be paid back to the you know given back to the legitimate owner if you do not the legit, you know the legitimate owner you just you just dispose that money you get rid of that money on behalf of the legitimate owner this is the only way only way where you can clear your record with with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala inna Allah ta'ala tayyibun la yaqbalu illa illa tayyib Allah is pure and does not accept does not accept uh, 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 whatever is not is not pure criteria for zakah payers who is supposed to pay zakat in mal of course i mean this is a like a formal act of worship so muslims are addressed with different rules of zakah reaching the minimum threshold or the nisab and nisab actually is 85 grams of gold so if the net amount after deducting everything after paying all the due debts if you still have whatever is equivalent to 85 grams of gold. When I say gold, I mean the 24 karat, like the pure, you know, gold, right? 24 karat. Uh, I would say nowadays around uh, $50 per gram. So 50 times 85, that's 4,200, 260, 60 plus. Can you do the math for me, please? Okay, 65, let's go with 60. 60 times, okay, 60 times 85 grams. Let's be in the safe side. If you do have $5,000 net amount and not a gross amount, there is a huge difference between the gross and the net amount. You might have gross amount, you know, $100,000. But after deducting all the due debts and the diyun and other iltizamat, whatever financial commitment that you have in that particular month, you might go down like, you know, less than the nisab. And you are the exempt, believe it or not. So let's go with the net amount. If the net amount is $5,000 or more, then you have to you have to pay zakat. Uh, one common mistake here is that some people think that if the nisab for this year is five thousand, and he or she has fifty thousand dollars net amount, okay, they pay zakat on the forty-five thousand. They exclude the nisab, and that's actually a common mistake. Nisab is to be included. Now, what is the use? What is the benefit of identifying the nisab? Is to determine whether or not you are a zakat payer for this year or not. If you do not have a nisab, then you're good to go. You are, you know, zakah exempt for this year. But if you have an isab or more, then everything actually is to be included, and you cannot exclude the the threshold and pay, you know, zakah on the on the on, on the rest of the rest of the money. Now, the the, the, the personal status of the zakah payer, whether whether the wealthy individual, the zakah payer, is uh, you know uh, um, like a minor or adult, um, like um, healthy. Um, 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 unhealthy, mentally challenged, or just you know, stable individual, okay, uh, orphan. It does not make any difference whatsoever, right? Because zakah actually is a is a financial ibadah, unlike salah. Like for example, we do not mandate our kids, four or five years old, to fast in the month of Ramadan, right? Or to perform Hajj, or to uh, pray five times daily, because this is actually a physical ibadah. This is a physical ibadah. When it comes to zakah, it's not physical, it is a financial one. So as long as that individual does have nisab or more, then zakah on his money has to be paid. So either he pays it by himself if he can manage, do calculation and, and doing the zakah due diligence, or otherwise his like, you know, legal guardian, okay, or the one who's taking care of him is supposed to uh, calculate and pay zakah on his behalf. Criteria for zakatable of zakatable wealth, exclusive ownership of threshold. So you have to make sure that that, that that nisab is exclusively owned by you. If you have like a very, very, very small business, okay, $5,000, owned jointly by you and by your non-Muslim business partner, okay? So your share is less than nisab. You don't have to pay zakat because the other party actually is not a Muslim to start with. So this is what I mean by exclusive ownership of threshold. You are the owner of the, of the threshold. 
ability of growth actually or potentially means that again anything that is not growable by nature right it is it is a care exempt and i always bring this this example which is the house that you live in as long as you live in the house the house is a care exempt regardless of its market value you move somewhere else and you put that house the same house that you used to live in you put it for rent then you pay zakah on the on the rent right and then you change your mind you put it for sale then you pay the account the market value of the of the house so the same house in the first scenario was the cash exempt in the second scenario it became zakatable based on the lease revenue in the third scenario it became zakatable in full based on its market value it's all about your intention and your practice as well your intention and your practice so passage of one lunar year means that you don't have to you don't have to pay zakah more than once more than once a year so the cash is to be paid on an annual annual basis i have heard that some brothers and sisters actually deduct 2.5 percent from their paycheck as the cattle man can you do that yes you can do you have to pay your zakah on a monthly basis no you don't have to well the philosophy actually behind paying the cattle man once a year is to have a breather is to have the opportunity of saving some money investing money making a profit from that profit you can put aside the 2.5 percent zakat al-mal if you decide to pay your zakat on a monthly basis it defeats the purpose of having the zakat and annual well you can again but there's a huge difference between can i pay zakat versus do i have to pay zakat you don't have to pay zakat on monthly basis however you can you can do so one of the conditions for the wealth itself actually is the accessibility or having a full access and that's why if you do have well if you have no access whatsoever like if you have a pension plan for example you work for the government for the federal or state or county they, they do not give you 401k or 403 they give you pension plan right pension plan actually is not i mean to my knowledge is not accessible whatsoever if that is the case then believe it or not even if you have hundreds of thousands of dollars in your pension plan that is the case again you can pay the care but you do not have to pay the account limited access a very good example for it is the regular uh, uh, regular uh, retirement account 401k if you apply for hardship for humanitarian case you will be having an access to 40 percent or 50 percent of your 401k well that accessible amount is the category that accessible amount is the category i will discuss it, inshallah further so if you do not have an access whatsoever that amount actually is not is not the category threshold versus poverty line there is no connection whatsoever there is no intersection between a threshold and poverty line nisab actually is not to be confused with the minimum standard of living i mean this is a, a economic slash governmental standard to determine eligibility of receiving some financial support from the government uh, you know tax waiver uh, food stamp i mean whatever the support might be Nisab actually has nothing to do with it. Nisab is a, is a technical fiqh, you know, term, and it has its own definition. Nisab means a minimum amount of wealth or minimum amount of money. That if you have it, then you have to pay zakah. If you do not have it, then you are, you are zakah exempt. So it's very, very possible that, that you are above the poverty line. You make a good amount of, 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 of money as an annual income, yet you are an eligible zakah recipient because you are legitimate expenses are way more than your your income so you make good money but that good money is insufficient for you right with no extravagance with no israf with no tabdir well if that is the case even if you make 100,000 or more some people might think wow i mean he's like he's making good money right but in reality that 100,000 is insufficient for you and your and for your family members if that is the case then you are an eligible zakat recipient believe it or not now the masjid might, might might deny your application because they have a policy they want to go with the more like you know needy individuals that's their policy we're not discussing you know, masajid policy here we're discussing the fiqh rules are you eligible zakat recipient although you make 100,000 yes if you can prove that your expenses are way more than what you what you make and vice versa someone might be under the poverty line under the parent I mean he's, he's eligible Yet that person does have an isab. Maybe he has some agricultural products, maybe have, uh, he has like a cattle, right, or whatever. 
even if he makes, even if he falls under the poverty line, but that individual is a a zakat payer. So my point here is that there is no connection. Yani do not assume that if someone is under the poverty line, then by default he or she is an eligible zakat recipient. Or otherwise, if someone is above the poverty line, then he has a zakat payer. Well, this is absolutely incorrect. There is no connection or intersection between the, between the two. You do not have to combine different assets to constitute an isab. You have some urud tijara, right? Some commodities and merchandise that do not reach $5,000. And you have you know, some agricultural products that do not reach you know, 500, you know, 560 plus uh, pounds or, or, or kilogram, and, and so on and so forth. Do you have to put all these different, different kinds of wealth or assets together to constitute an isab? You do not have to, because every single category has its own criteria. If you have khamsa to awsuq, agricultural products, okay, then you have to pay zakah on the, on, the, on, the, on the agricultural products. If you have uh, like 30 cows or more, or buffalo, then you have to pay zakah. If you have a 29, then you're good to go. I mean, you are just, you know, tax or, or zakah exempt. So you don't have to combine different assets to constitute uh, uh, an isab. Consistency of possessing a threshold is not necessary, especially for uh, business people, okay? Like at a certain spot in, in, in the year, you might run out of commodities and merchandise in your store, okay? And you might run out of cash money because you already made an order, okay? You paid for the order in advance, you are waiting, you know, for the, for the order. So technically at that point, you do not have any cash money, right? And you do not have any commodities for sale. So if someone does not know what's going on, he or she might think that you are going under the, under the threshold. And this would ruin the, you know, the zakat due date or the hawl, which is the fiscal loan arrear. This is incorrect. Once you, once you determine that, yes, I do have an isab. And by the way, your zakat due date, zakat due date, Technically speaking, if you want to go with the book, it shouldn't be in the, in the month of Ramadan, by the way. It should not. You, your hawl, your fiscal lunar year, starts from the day that you constitute or accumulate an isab. So in the, in the 15th of Safar, or Rajab, or Rabi' al-Awwal, you constituted $5,000 worth of, 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 of investment, right? From that point on, you need, to, you need to mark your calendar and wait for one complete year. 15th of Safar, 15th of Rabi' al-Awwal. 15th of Safar or Rabi' al-Awwal of the next year, you have to pay zakah. In reality, it's close to impossible to remember which day, right, you, const you constitute the Nisab. So you just, you know, take it easy, mark your calendar for the month of Ramadan to pay zakah al-mal. Wallahu ghafoor rahim. But if you want to go with the book, actually, this is, this is uh, uh, incorrect. So consistency of possessing the, th the threshold actually is, is not necessary. Your, your nisab, I'm sorry, your, your zakat due date, zakat due date is the month of Ramadan, okay? After paying your zakat, uh, uh, let's say Shawwal, Dhul Qaada, Dhul Hajjah, Muharram, Safar, Rabi' al or Rabi' al-Thani. In Rabi' al-Thani, you went below the nisab. Doesn't make a difference. Just keep going with your business. If you, if you reach to next Ramadan, or Ramadan of next year, and you still have an isab, then you are still a zakat payer, regardless of the fluctuation that took place throughout the whole, the whole year long. Salaries and professional fees. You have your own professional service. You are a lawyer, uh, a physician, uh, engineer, consultant, a physical therapist, whatever the profession might be. You experience, you know, money, fees, right? Uh, you know, cash money, checks from your clients, from your customers on a regular basis. Sometimes you receive money on daily basis, right? Some people think that, that, that paying zakah on an annual basis means that you have to keep a track of every single payment that you receive. So yesterday you received $5,000. Today you received $1,000. You, I mean, you need to keep a track of everything. This is incorrect. Forget about the, you know, the cash flow that you experience, forget about it. You have only one source of income, which is your profession. You work as a, as a, as a physician, right? If you do have in your checking account $5,000 or more, then, then by default that money came from the business that you have, right? Any amount on top of the nisab 
will be taking the same rule of the Nisab itself. So the Nisab is 5,000, right? And, and just one or two days before the beginning of Ramadan, you received a check for $25,000, okay? And you deposit that money. One or two days, the month of Ramadan has started. Do you have to pay the account that big check of 25,000? Yes, because that money actually is called Al-Mal Al-Mustafad, like the extra money. Al-Mal Al-Mustafad takes the same rule of the Nisab itself. If the Nisab is established already, whatever you have on top of the Nisab will be taking the same rule of the, of the Nisab. As long as, as long as that money is coming from the same source of income. Remember, you are a physician. And the only source of income you have is the money that you receive from your patients or from the insurance companies. So that, that cash flow should be added up to the checking account that you have or your business account that you have. Whatever you have in the zakat you date, even if some of that money came just a few hours before the beginning of Ramadan, that money is to be included and not to be excluded. What if that money came completely from a different source of income? You inherited money from one of your relatives who just passed away. This is a very, very irregular income. Okay, you inherited, let's say, half a million dollars. Okay, your nisab, your zakat you did, the regular one, is Ramadan first of each year, right? Now, in the month of uh, Rabi' al-Awwal, you received half a million dollars inheritance, mirath. Do you have to add up that half a million dollars to the other account that you have? No, you don't have to. You establish a new, a new hawl for that you know, uh, uh, inherited money or that asset, thank you, right? So Rabi' al-Awwal, you just mark your calendar. Next year, if you still have that money, right, available, accessible, then you have to pay the account. So you end up having how many zakat you date in your case? Two. One of them is for the regular income and the other one is for the very irregular, irregular income. Jewelry and ornament, long story short, as long as the jewelry is for the personal use of the sister, okay, as well as within the average in that society, within the average, and that average actually differs from one society to another, from one age to other. A sister like 25 years old is way different from 70 or 80 years old. Uh, a sister living in, in, in USA, way different from a sister living in Syria or Jordan or, in, or in, 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 in Pakistan, for example. So whatever is, is well known as a, like, you know, prevailing, you know, custom, prevailing practice, common practice in that society is the standard. If the, if the, if the common practice here is that, you know, um, up to 25,000, up to $30,000 worth of jewelry is a very common practice and a sister does have up to 30,000, that jewelry actually is zakat exempt, right? But what if she has $100,000 worth of jewelry? Oh, that's, that's way too much, right? So the first 30,000, first 30,000 are zakat exempt and the remaining are zakatable. This is actually is to, I mean, to take into consideration the different opinions or different madhahib regarding zakatability on jewelry. If you want to go like purely with the Hanafi school of thought that is followed by the, uh, uh, like most people in, in, the, in the subcontinent, like in India and Pakistan and Bangladesh, right? They follow the Hanafi school of thought. So according to the Ahnaf, jewelry actually is zakatable. I'm not here, by the way, to discourage anyone from paying zakah on jewelry. If you do pay zakah on jewelry, keep up the good job. The more zakah you pay, the more reward you will be getting. But there is a huge difference, again, between do I have to pay zakah on the jewelry versus can I pay zakah? Well, you can. But do you have to pay zakah? My answer actually is no. As long as that jewelry is within the average, number one. And number two, for your personal use, you did not buy that jewelry for business purposes. You are not like waiting for the price to go up and to sell what you have and whenever it goes down, you buy. This is not your practice, right? Uh, that jewelry is for you. And when I say for your personal use, it does not mean that you have to use that jewelry regularly. Sometimes like you put, the, you put them aside for any hafla or party or wedding or reception, maybe use it once a year, uh, once every other year, that would be fine. At the end of the day, that jewelry is not for business purposes, right? If that is the case, Within the average, then you're good to go. You don't have to pay zakah on the jewelry that you, that you have. Yeah, if you, if you give me just maybe, how much time you have? Hour for, for me to keep talking or? 
20 minutes? طيب. Plus tax ولا including tax؟ <تصفيق> طيب. Retirement retirement account. Okay. Uh, well, let's go with the investment in the stock market in general because retirement account belongs to stock market, right? Whether it is individual retirement account or uh, um, employer-based retirement account. If you want to go with the retirement account that is employer-based retirement account, you need to find out how much, how much is the accessible, thank you, how much is the accessible amount you have in your 401k, whether, whether your contribution or the match of your employer. Okay, in the, in the zakat due date, you have $1 million straight, just to keep it simple. If you apply, just hypothetically speaking, you applied for hardship, you applied for humanitarian case, okay? Fidelity or, or Vanguard might give you an access to, let's say, 50% of your account, right? So the accessible amount is how much? Half a million dollars. If you decide to proceed, and by the way, this is like a very theoretical math, you don't have to withdraw the money. It's just like a math that you do off record in order for, in order, in order for you to determine how much you have to pay, right? So the accessible amount is half a million. If you decide to proceed, you will not be taken home half a million. You will be penalized, you will be charged interest, processing fees, uh, tax, it depends on what kind of uh, an retirement account you have. So let's say that total charges, okay, after the you know, prescribed penalty, prescribed tax or whatever, let's say that you know, take home amount is 450,000. That is the zakatable money. Well, even, even, even within those $450,000, you have two options. If you want to be in the safe side, okay, just have a peace of mind and pay Zakat 2.5% on the 450. If you want to go with the book, as they say, you do not want to pay one single penny extra, you still can deduct another maybe 15 or 20% usul thabita, fixed assets, because those stocks that you hold in your retirement account do not represent commodities and merchandise 100%. Every single company does have its own fixed assets, right? Offices and machineries and, and devices and tools and so on and so forth. So roughly speaking, 15, 20% actually is safe enough. So you do the math, the net amount, net amount is the zakatable one. You pay zakat based on 2.5%. You pay zakat based on 2.5%. This is actually a kind of ijtihad uh, actually. This is an, like, you know, an intellectual, you know, reasoning. And this is our official position at our Fiqh Council, the Assembly of Muslim Jurists of America, Amja, right? We might be right, we might be wrong, Allah Allah. If you ask like a different, you know, people of knowledge, their answer might be, well, forget about your 401k. It's not zakatable whatsoever. Just wait until, until you get retired and then you start paying his account. That's a very valid opinion, by the way. If you ask another one that you trust his knowledge and his commitment to his deen, Answer might be, well, you have to pay zakah on 100% on, on of what you have. So we have like two different extreme opinions here, okay? Your retirement account is zakatable on full 100% versus your retirement account is, uh, is zakah, zakah exempt, right? We hold the stick from the middle. We say, well, find out every single year what is the accessible amount and do the math here, how much you will be charged if you, if, if you decide to proceed and withdraw as much as you can, net amount is zakatable based on 2.5%. What if you think that, you know, this opinion is like reasonable, makes sense, okay? And you did not pay zakat on your retirement account for the last 20, 25 years. Do you have to backdate that fatwa and go back to 1995 when you get your job for the first time? Do you have to? You don't have to. Okay. From now on, you just embrace that opinion and start applying it. Forget about what's happened in the past. Why? Because again, this is like a, a kind of ijtihad, like independent reasoning, right? We might be right, we might be wrong. Allahu Alaihi. Moving on. Uh, okay, what if you have investment in the stock market that is outside the retirement account? Okay. Now, you have two different scenarios. Some of us actually, oops, some of us might have, you know, stocks, okay? I mean, you might have like a TD Ameritrade uh, app and, and, and you buy stocks and you just save them in, in the stock market and you are not that interested in, 
in trading on a regular basis. You are not active in the stock market, right? You do not like buy and sell and you watch the news and the indexes. No, you are not that person. You are happy with the dividend that you make, right? If this is what you usually do, buying stocks, sleeping on them, okay, getting some, some dividend and, uh, and that's it. If this is, yeah, if this is, yeah, like, like, like uh, long-term investment, if, if you wish, if this is your common practice, then you don't have to pay zakah on the principal amount or the market value, the service value of your account. Okay, you have $75,000 worth of investment and you made only 5,000 dividend. You pay zakah on the 5,000 only, okay, on the, uh, on the dividend. Why? Because the stocks in this scenario are not road tijara, they are not for sale. Versus somebody else who is very active in the market, right? Always like, you know, speculates, like buys and sells and, you know, watches the news and so on and so forth, okay? For that person, the stocks that he or she has are road tijara. Everything is for sale. Well, road tijara actually are, are zakat. So he has to pay zakat on everything, on the principal amount and the dividend that he, that he makes. Does it make a difference? If you, if you have chosen to keep the dividend, like, you know, capitalize the dividend, like, like you kept it in the, in the account by purchasing more stocks versus withdrawing the dividend and using it for yourself, doesn't make any difference. You have to pay the account on the uh, dividend. Uh, any kind of uh, bonds, derivatives, uh, futures, options, you need to stay away from them. The, the majority of those financial instruments are not allowed. I'm not saying that every single option is haram, okay? But the mainstream fatwa nowadays is that bonds is an interest-bearing loan, right? Derivatives, CDS, CDO, Musharraf, those are actually nonsense financial instruments. They, they are not backed up by any commodity or merchandise. They do not represent any service. It's just I mean, like, like a piece of paper. And this is actually not something that you should consider as a practicing Muslim. You trade in something that makes sense, right? You buy, you sell, you produce, you commission, you add some you know, value to the society by the business that you do, right? So stay away from any financial instrument that is, that is non-stock, right? Especially when it comes to bonds. Bonds actually is a straightforward interest-bearing loan. You, you lend the federal government a certain amount of money, right? And you get interest. So zakat on bonds. The principle itself is the category. You have a T bill, $5,000, right? Uh, its maturity is in, on, on January 2024. 2024, you received 5,500. 500 is haram. That's riba. What should you do with it? Dispose it, right? You can put it in the masjid, you can put it in donation, give it to anyone, but you cannot spend it on yourself and your family members or your dependents. While the $5,000 principles are still the category. You need to pay zakah, you need to pay zakah. Options, futures, derivatives, okay. <clears throat> zakah on, on, on loans, if you lend it others money, you do not have to pay zakah as a lender. Because one of the, one of the conditions for the zakah ability of any asset or money is al-mulku tam raqabatan wa yadan, full ownership and full access. Okay, you give someone $100,000, Qardun Hassan, interest fee loan, right? It's, it's very, very unfair for you as a lender, okay, to wait for one year and to anchor the inflation, okay, and to keep praying that, that that brother or sister will pay you back the money, especially if you give your money to a Muslim brother. Good luck, inshallah. Inshallah, the next year, Ramadan al-Jay, Araf Rajani al-Shahr al-Jay, So you wait until you receive your money and you anchor the inflation and you pay zakah, you pay zakah 2.5% on a money that you do not have an access to, that, that is, that's very, very unfair. By the way, there is nothing authentic could be attributed to the Prophet ﷺ regarding zakat al -diyun. Nothing whatsoever. Otherwise, we'll be just saying سَمَعْنَا وَطَعْنَا there is, there is no such evidence. And that's why the Sahaba عنهم, and the Tabi'een and the founders of the uh, four different madhahib and the contemporary Fiqh councils are still having the same disagreement on who is supposed to pay zakah on the loan, right? It's either, either the lender or the borrower, right? Or both of them or none of the above. None, none of the above actually is not, uh, is, is not applicable. There is some money that has to be charged zakah. Charging both of them is incorrect. I mean, you, I mean, you cannot, 
لاثينا في الصدق no duplication and in taxation so it, it's not possible to ask the borrower and the lender both to pay zakah on the same amount so we ended up having either or either the lender or the the borrower well if the lender does not have an access to it then who else has to pay zakah well the borrower if if you are the borrower and you kept that money you kept the money for one complete year without spending the money well you have to pay zakah on it if you took that money to pay you know, for the tuition fees or for the rent of your apartment, and you took that money, you spend it already. Well, there is no money to worry about to start with. So you're good to go, right? But if you decided to borrow money and you slipped in the money for one complete year without spending it, well, you have to be, you have to be penalized. You have to be charged zakah, and you have to pay, you know, zakah based on 2.5%. Now, if you are the lender and you received the money, you start paying the account. You just wait for one complete year, and you, you, you know, you resume paying zakah on the, on the money. Mortgage and other payments, all the due debts for that particular month, okay, are deductible. So, so let's say, for example, that, that your zakatable wealth, okay, your, uh, your net amount, how about that? Your net amount is $200,000 straight and you owe the mortgage company, of course, this is regardless of mortgage, haram or halal, that's a completely different discussion. You owe the mortgage company $200,000. Can you say, okay, I have $200,000, and I'm in debt of $200,000, so I'm, I'm zakah exempt. Is that, is that accurate? Well, if you, if you decide to pay off the outstanding balance to the mortgage company, go for it. But you cannot put the $200,000 aside okay, to excuse yourself from paying the cattle mail. And meanwhile, you do, not, you do not pay that money to the mortgage company. Nice try. You cannot do that. It's either or. You either put it aside and you pay it, so you run out of cash. Thus, consequently, you are zakat exempt because you do not have any sob. Or otherwise, you say, no, that, that loan to the mortgage company is not due in full. I owe the mortgage company how much? Two thousand, three thousand dollars a month. So that monthly payment is to be, you know, put aside, but not the total amount. That two hundred thousand dollars in our example are due within the next ten years. Wait, why you why you take advantage of the of the undue debts and you excuse yourself, okay, from paying the cattle mail because you are in debt? Well, if that is the case, why do not you take into consideration your potential income? for the next 10 years and you pay zakah on them. You see, use, using the same logic. Of course, I mean, none of the above actually apply. You are not supposed to pay zakah on a potential income, and you are not supposed to excuse yourself from paying, uh, from paying zakah because of a potential debt or an undue debt. So you just, whatever you have on the zakah due date, okay? Whatever you have in the zakah. Any, any kind of debt that's a due, you still owe the IRS money you did not pay. We are like doing our, uh, our tax nowadays, right? So just, just imagine that the month of Ramadan came and you did not pay the IRS, Uncle Sam, whatever you, you know, owe the, the, the government. That amount actually is to be you know, put aside. You still have $3,000 for the mortgage for that particular month, put it aside. Another $500 for the car, right? An installment, put it aside. You need another $5,000 for yourself and your family members, food, drink, transportation, you know, uh, living expenses, put them aside. Another due debt, seven put it aside. You just keep deducting, deducting, deducting all the way until you reach to a point where, where you have a certain amount that's called the net amount. Called the net amount. Net amount actually is the, is the zakat loan. Is it $5,000 or more? If the answer is yes, then you have to pay zakat. You went below 5,000, you are zakah exempt for that, you know, for that year. Business people, they, they need to go with, the, with what's called the, the wholesale market value, okay? You have a car dealership business. You have 25 cars on the lot, right? Owned by you in the zakah due date, right? How much you have to pay zakah? How to determine the value of, of your business at that day? Some people actually go with the, with, the, with, the, with the book value, okay? Or the invoice value, which means that how much they already paid 
for those cars. This is actually un unfair. I mean, it's not fair. Because the current value of the cars that you have might be the same, might be more, or might be less. Especially like if you trade in food and, and snack, right? Sometimes like you purchase a snack and uh, it got expired. Its market value is zero, right? And you already paid 10, 15,000 for that chips or that alcir or whatever. So do not go with the invoice value. And do not go with the retail value, by the way. For those 25 cards that you have in your lot in the Zakat you did, if you are asking for half a million dollars, retail price. Do not pay Zakat on, on half a million dollars. Because this is actually a potential money. You might receive that money, and you might, you might not. So you go with something called the wholesale market value. What does it mean? It means that if you do not have any of those cards, if you do not have any of those cards, Okay, in your lot in the Zakat you did, and you want to go to the auction to purchase all of them at that day, how much you are willing to pay to the auction to buy all these cars? That's the wholesale market value. So you do your math and you pay Zakat based on the wholesale market value. Agriculture products, livestock, livestock, okay. Zakat recipients, uh, الفقراء المساكين العاملين عليها let's, let's go all the way to ولفت قلوبهم like new Muslims في سبيل الله for the cause of Allah traditionally as you see here sponsoring volunteers and legitimate jihad activities like physical jihad right the contemporary fiqh councils nowadays are almost unanimous that في سبيل الله does not mean the like physical military jihad activities legitimate jihad activities Jihad means striving for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to establish his deen. Even if you insist in, in sticking to the concept of jihad, Prophet ﷺ himself is the one who said, Jahidul Mushrikeen, like apply jihad against the enemies of Islam. Jahidul Mushrikeen, bi amwalikum wa anfusikum wa alsinatikum. Apply jihad financially, physically, and through education, bi alsinatikum, right? So even if you want to go with the Literal meaning of jihad. Jihad does not have to be the physical one. It could be education. It could be spiritual. It could be, you know, a, a financial one, right? So based on that, our fiqh council, Amja, and the Muslim world, uh, like the fiqh council of the Muslim world league, and the fiqh council of the European Council of uh, uh, Research and Fatwa, we are unanimous that fi sabil Allah does have a lot of flexibility. And based on that, based on that, paying zakat al -man, Zakat al-Mal, to Islamic organizations, especially outside the Muslim world, as long as you believe that that Islamic organization is doing a good job, like it is serving the Muslim community, right? And you trust the leadership of that organization. You trust the leadership of that organization. And they ask for Zakat al-Mal. So how many conditions? Three. Okay, they say clearly that, that donation, donation, contribution are insufficient. We need your Zakat then you can confidently pay zakat al mal pay zakat al mal so paying zakat in the usa paying zakat al mal to build a masjid to maintain a masjid support an islamic school support an islamic college paying your zakat to care paying your zakat to mass to ikna to isna to you know muslim americans for palestine whatever organization again if you believe that they are doing a good job okay dawa wise you trust the leadership of that organization, and they are asking for zakat al-mal, you go ahead and pay them zakat al-mal. Personally, I do pay my zakat to my local masjid. I send some of the zakat money overseas. I pay zakat al-mal to guidance card that I'm representing today. I pay zakat al-mal to mass, to isna, to ikna. I do not mind because I do believe that all these organizations, mashallah, are doing a wonderful job, serving the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this society, and they deserve our support. They deserve our, our support. Moving on, Doctor, am, am I done? let me, huh? Five more minutes, okay. Uh, some more rules here to, you know, to consider. There is no maximum amount to give to one recipient, by the way. Your zakah is 7,000, and there is a, like a single young man who's desperate for marriage, and you think that he deserves, you know, your money the most. Can you give the whole 7,000 to that young man to get married? Yes, you can. Can you limit yourself to one category? Only 
المؤلفه قلوبهم نيو كومبرس اونلي في سبيل الله بيكوز ماي لوكال مسجد از ان ديسبرت نيد فور ماي زكاه كان اي باي ماي زكاه تو ماي لوكال مسجد يس يو كان رايت اجين اف يو تراست ذا ليدر شيب اند اف ذي اسك فور يور زكاه بيكوز سم مساجد اكشلي ار ويلثي لايك ذا كوميونيتي از ويلثي انف دو نوت باي يور زكاه ذير دو نوت اف ذا كوميونيتي از ويلثي انف اند ذي كان كفر ذا اكسبنسز اكسبانشن كونستراكشن اوفر هيد اكسبنسز باي رول وات ايفر ذا اكسبنس مايت بي رايت فروم ذير اون صدقه اند دونيشن اند كونتريبيوشن ممبر شيب فيز دو نوت باي زكاه سو Paying zakat al-mal to Islamic organization is the exception, another default. If I'm to go back to Saudi Arabia or to Jordan or to Algeria or to Pakistan next day in the morning, I should not pay zakat al-mal to you know, sponsor masajid because they have their own budget and Islamic affairs, you know, the Ministry of Islamic Affairs, they take care of the, of the masajid. Here in the West, it's a completely different story. This masjid actually was built a while, a while ago by your donation, the donation of the Muslim community who are living here. Islamic organizations, churches, synagogues, like all these different places of worship in, in a very secular society like, like America uh, are built by the contribution of the congregation or the community members of that particular place of, uh, place of worship. Do not delay your zakah. If you, okay, if you end up having a big amount of money due on your retirement account and you do not have cash money, can you wait until you get some cash, yes, you can. My advice, do not wait, because it's gonna accumulate and it's gonna become like more and more complicated. If your zakah for this year is 7,000, and you just say, okay, I do not have enough money, and you wait until next year, what will happen? They're gonna jump to 14 or 15,000. Next year, 21,000. So it's gonna get like worse. My recommendation, you, you go ahead and liquidate some of the assets that you have and pay them as zakat al-mal. Make sure that your, your record with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is very, very clear. Every single year, you just pay, pay zakat to mal. Paying zakat in advance is fine. If you estimate your zakat to be $6,000 a year, okay, and, and you are afraid that you might not have enough cash in the month of Ramadan, you just go ahead from now and pay $500 a month, right? Yeah. By the, by the month of Ramadan, you will be already paying your, your, your due zakat. Let me go to, uh, I would, I would recommend this, uh, this link. Okay, this is zekifinancial.com. Please feel free to get a copy from the presentation. I gave it to uh, uh, Rosanna. This is not a, a copyrighted presentation. It's for every Muslim. Go ahead and get your own copy and pass it on to uh, like whomever is, is interested. This is an online, online application. I do approve it. I went through it in, 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 like in full and details. And you do not have to compromise or to give any personal confidential information, no name, no social security, nothing whatsoever. You just go to this uh, uh, link, fill out the, the, the information, it will automatically calculate the zakah for you. And again, I do approve this one, uh, 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 developed by Dr. Ahmed uh, Rami Saltaji, who is the CEO of uh, Zaki Financial. He's a, he's a Syrian medical doctor, but he does have a hobby of uh, like Islamic finance and investment. So he is a certified a certified uh, uh, financial advisor. Anyway, this, uh, this uh, uh, application is a very simple one, okay? And I do recommend it, okay? Again, you do not have to use any uh, confidential, no name, no social security number, no date of birth, nothing whatsoever. Enter the amount, and the system will automatically calculate it for you, and you calculate your zakah. Jazakumullah khairan, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Tawdol al the floor is yours. How much time we have, uh, Dictator? 40 minutes? MashaAllah. Let me, let me start from, from my right side here. I will take maybe one question from sister's side and one question from the brothers. Is that fair enough? Ladies first. Coins. Lira Dahab. If they are not jewelry and you keep them uh, in your position for one complete year, and if you add them up to whatever 
whatever otherwise you have cash money, if they accumulate any sob, then you have to pay the calendar. Yeah, yeah, you have to. What's that? Well, you, you, you as a dad or a mom, you pay zakah on behalf of your, uh, on behalf of your child. If they are exclusively owned by the child and your plan is to keep them like, you know, for the future, if they accumulate any sob, then they are zakatable. If they accumulate any sob, then, then your child has to pay zakah as, as, as already explained, and you go ahead and pay zakah on his or her behalf. Okay. It depends on whether or not you have taken all the like possible safety measures. If there was, if it is proven that there was a kind of uh, like carelessness or negligence or uh, you know, like any shortcoming from your side in, 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 in saving the money, like preserving the zakah money, then you have to pay your zakah again. So if we can have maybe one, one conversation, please, if you don't mind, let's, let, let's listen to the brother here. Tell them. So the money is like, you know, taken by the government? Yes, yes. Oh, an other entity, yes. By force or whatever it is, against your will. Mm. Yeah, uh, I need to think more about it. Though. I do not have an answer. Jazakallah khair. So, I had an answer. Type sisters, for them. I'll tell you more. Well, I think, I think you are the best person to answer this question. Because sisters, I mean, know the culture and the prevailing practice and the difference between, like, difference between cultures, age-wise, uh, uh, income, annual income-wise. Like, for example, a wife of a, a physician both living in USA versus a wife of a physician living in Pakistan or in Algeria. Well, they both actor are both are wives of physicians, but the, the, the country that they are living in is different. So, so the, the 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 common practice or the prevailing custom, okay, in USA is different than Algeria, different than Pakistan. So you need to like do some due diligence and ask like within your community what is the average, and based on that actually you can you can decide what is what is what is acceptable, what is zakah exempt. And what is actually uh, zakatable? No, no. Just prevailing custom, common practice. Yeah. Potential Muslims. Well, right. No, no, no. Al Mu'alafati Qulubuhum means potential Muslims. So they deserve that money even if they are extremely wealthy. You do not give them because of their financial need. You give them like to soften their hearts and to increase the sense of belonging and loyalty to the Muslim community. You give them the money, okay? as a gift, you don't have to tell them, I mean, you don't have to tell them that this is zakah, right? You just give them the money. But your intention actually is to pay zakah to mal regardless of their financial status. They might be even wealthier than the zakah payer himself. 
but they deserve it because of being like so close to Muslims. I mean, you know, I mean, you can tell who is hostile and who is friendly and who is, you know, loving individual and who is hating individual and so on and so forth. So use your own discretion, your own assessment to, to, to define al mualafati qulub. Someone who loves like Muslims and, and very close to you and always ask about Islam and shows like you know, due respect for you as, uh, as a practicing Muslim, uh, that is al mualafati qulub. So you can keep giving them from zakat al mal even if they are wealthy, even if they are. Al-Mu'allafati Qulubuhum, according to the strongest opinion, new Muslims. New Muslims, like those who accepted Islam. However, however, we do have actually uh, like a well-established debate between the four madhahab. Some said that if someone is very close to Islam, you give him the money, okay, before embracing Islam. If you want to be in the safe side, do not give your zakah to non-Muslims. You give zakah to new Muslims. New Muslims like, like, like fresh, brand new Muslims who just embraced Islam. In order for you to increase their sense of belonging and loyalty to Islam and Muslims, you give them that, that money. Again, regardless of their financial status, they might be wealthier than the zakat payer himself. So, the, 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 not the conservative, the, the strongest opinion is that Mu'allafati Qulubuhum, a new converts to Islam or new reverse to Islam, not potential Muslims. Say the game, sorry. Yes, yes. Use your own discretion. Like, I mean, if she's a sister, for example, maybe you can give her some, some gold. Okay. You put your zakah aside, you purchase gold or whatever, something that's valuable, and you give her as, as a gift. You don't have to tell her that this is zakah. But, I mean, uh, you know, it's just, it's just a gift. Yeah. But so I have problem. two quick questions, uh, uh, you know, follow up with her questions. Here, like in America, here in Michigan, the average woman, for instance, in one city, uh, but, uh, the average woman jewelry is 300 to 500,000. And another city is five to 10,000. So which one she should take? Here, I'm talking about just 10 miles or 20 miles away. What do you do? Which one she should take? Well, I, yeah, if that is the case uh, and the difference is, is, is significant and huge, I would rather uh, go with the Hanafi approach and just mandate zakah on the jewelry. Just be in the safe side. Even if you do not have to pay zakah, well, if it is not counted technically as zakah, it will be counted as a sadaqa. So just go, go ahead and just pay zakah on all the jewelry that you have. Right? Okay. Otherwise, if it is easy for you to determine, then as we discussed before, you just go with the, with the common practice, with the prevailing custom of that particular uh, community. Taking into consideration the differences, right? Age-wise, financial status, the maybe academic qualification, profession, and so on and so forth. In addition to the fact that that you know, countries you know, differ uh, from one to another. And let's say if one center need $100 and your zakat is 25, can you take from the next three years 25, 25? Let's say I advance, brother, he asked me for $100 and only I want to pay it from zakat. But I only can, you know, I only eligible to pay 25 this year. Can I deduct the next three years 25, 25? So I can pay him so he can get his from center your side, and so on? Yeah. From your side, prepayment of zakah is, is fine. It did actually happen with the Prophet ﷺ when he asked his uncle Abbas anh, to prepay his zakah. However, you need to be careful. You have to make sure that the zakah recipient next year or next years is still eligible zakah recipient. What if he became a wealthy individual? Then you, you already no, paid. What center? Here. Islamic but, center? Yeah. Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Go for it. Okay. Anybody here? Oh, if you had him. Oh, it's out. Fine. About the jewelry, especially the jewelry now. So, if we paid zakah, let's say, on the jewelry this year, and we did not add more jewelry for next year, do we need to pay zakah again on these items? If you want to go with the Hanafi approach, yes. Okay, so jewelry is equivalent to cash money. Okay. What if you have one hundred thousand dollars? Yes. Cash money. Mm -hmm. Okay, saved in your checking account, and you paid two point five percent zakah, and that money actually stayed in, in the bank account for one complete year. Do you still have to pay zakah on them? Yes. Okay. Uh, with, with maybe a few exceptions here, like when it comes to agricultural products, okay, you have some harvest, wheat or barley or whatever, you pay the count for this year, okay, and you kept it in your position for one complete year, you don't have to pay the count. Okay. Because it's not a growable asset, but the cash money is a growable asset. However, you have chosen not to invest it. Well, that's, that's your choice. As long as you have it in your position, then you have to pay the count on an annual basis every, every single year. By the way, I'm, uh, I'm representing Guidance College, and there is a 
a table right there in the in the back. There are some some brochures brochures like to introduce the college more. If you want to learn more about the programs that we have, we have bachelor's degree in Islamic studies. We have masters in Islamic education. We have masters in Islamic economics and finance. And we are actually in the process of building a masjid and a main office of guidance college. So I mean, we welcome any donation or any support that you might decide to give to the uh, to the college. Yes, sister. Assalamu alaikum. Sorry. Assalamu alaikum. Jazakallah khair. Uh, I'm going to record two things you mentioned. Uh, you mentioned if somebody starts with Ramadan first, $5,000. Halal Hawl, he has 10000 I think you mentioned that he paid ten, zakah on the 10000 Correct. But the other five didn't make the whole, uh, the whole year. That's fine. That's, that's called the Mal al Mustafat. Okay. So that actually is the extra money that's added up to the nisab. Oh, so you pay for the whole thing? Yeah, let's Even say, if you get it like what, as you stated, one day before. Let me give you another example. Yeah. In Ramadan of this year, right? Okay, you work as a lawyer and you found out that you have $75,000 net amount after all deductions, mm -hmm. right? You pay the count then. Next year, next year, you found out that you do have $100,000. And you are positive that seven, eight, ten thousand dollars were deposited, deposited into your checking account just one or two days before Ramadan of next year. Do you have to include everything? Yes, you have to include everything. That's called the Mal al Mustafad. The Mal al Mustafad is to be added up to the Nisab, and it takes the same rule of the Nisab. So, Hawalan al Hawl, the passage of one fiscal lunar year, means on the Nisab itself. Okay. And whatever is added on top of the Nisab. That okay. makes sense. My second question is. You, uh, when you said about the chicken or the cows, the, you said the chicken, you know, I mean, there is no zakah, but there is a zakah on the eggs. Well, let's say there is a farmer. Not on the eggs, technically, on, on the money that you make out of selling the Selling eggs. the eggs, yeah, I mean. Uh, so, but let's say somebody is a farmer, and, you know, he's selling the eggs. I'm just recording ex the exact, selling the eggs to eat, you know, to survive. Does that mean he still have to pay zakah on the eggs? Regardless what he's cost, no. I mean, no. what he, or just assuming that all the eggs he got uh, are profit. Okay, let's, let's say that he makes $5,000 from, from like eggs business, right? And he spends, uh, he spends $5,000. In the zakat due date, how much money he has? What about his surviving? I mean, his daily expense to yeah, live. The, yeah, this is what I'm saying. He makes 5000 and he spends $5,000. So okay. it does not have any sob to start with. There is no zakat. Okay. And that's why we said several times that zakat is due on the remaining income. Whatever you spend throughout the whole year long is not counted. You see what I'm saying? Only whatever you have in the zakat you did. Just a quick question in regards to the zakat. If you've had opportunity throughout the year to help out or do anything that qualifies as zakat, did, would you have had to say that that's towards that, or it could just be? Uh, would you please repeat the question again? Okay. I'm sorry. So throughout the year, you've had opportunity to help in one of the items that um, you know qualifies as a cut, but okay. you didn't say it was a cut. Does that qualify? Like you've, you've yes, if you do have the right intention, right? right? Let's say, for example, that you want to pay your zakat to uh, give me a name. Zakat Foundation, Pure Hands, uh, no, no, Islamic like Relief, helped, USA. You've helped towards operation. Uh, you know, you helped what? You've, you've supported an operation that would have not been able to happen. If operation? Someone, like a surgery. So you paid on behalf of someone? Yeah, I mean, it was one of the things that was needed, and, you know, community came forward and you know, made Did that you possible. Did you pay on behalf of someone who, who is an eligible Zakat recipient? Needy uh, yes, individual yes. who cannot afford yes. paying for the surgery? Yes. Did you pay it with the intention of paying your zakat al mal? No. That's what I'm saying. Like if Well well next time next time make sure that you have an intention prior to paying the money. Because zakat is a is a formal act of worship, which means that for example, do you do you pray Salatul Isha and then you say, you know what, I prayed for rakat. I'm going to count it as Salat al Isha. Will it be counted? No. no. You have to have the intention prior to saying Allahu Akbar. So the intention has to be prepared, it has to be initiated 
prior to the ibadah, okay. right? So you have your intention and you pray. You have your intention and you pay the cash in So next time, next time, make sure that you uh, give that money to an eligible zakah recipient, whether a corporate person or like real individual, right? Masjid or school or college or whatever, as well as you have the intention of paying zakah in mar With those two conditions, whatever you pay will be counted as zakah. This is actually what I, what I do, by the way. I do have the intention when I, when I like pay throughout the whole year long, I attend several fundraising and I sure. donate, right? My intention is to prepay my zakah. Okay. Is to prepay my zakah. And the zakah due date, I find out, alhamdulillah, that I already paid my zakah even sometimes more. So I'm, I'm, I'm just good to go. So if, the, so if someone is collecting this and says, it says to you, you, you know, you could um, record this towards zakah, then it's okay. With the, with the proper intention. Yes. With the proper intention. So paying to Islamic schools, paying to uh, masajid, paying to guidance college actually is an eligible zakah recipient, by the way. Naam, tafadhala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I was told uh, was by uh, Sheikh Abdul Hamid Salim, at, he was at the Masjid I City, and he said you don't have to pay the zakah in one time. You can pay it frequently, like in portions. It doesn't have to be one time, certain time of the year, like before Ramadan or after are you Ramadan. Take, are you talking about prepaying zakah or whenever the zakah is due? And you have the money and you have no, the recipient. I, I, for, to clarify, I know the amount of the zakah for the year. It has been already, I calculated. So I, I took it apart and uh, I just give it away in portions. And he, and I was also told that it's okay to give it for education of a family member. Type. More than one thing. Or to pay okay. loans and stuff like that. Okay. More than one thing here. I know. Now she, she's talking about something else. She says that, that her zakah, for example, is $5,000. And you do have the money ready. And you do have eligible zakah recipients. But according to your own discretion, it does not... It's not a good option, right, to pay your zakah in full for one individual or at once. And you want to break it down by paying it monthly or like, you know, periodically. Okay, let me, okay. Let me, let, let me make it clear. We do, have, we do have a default rule and we have an exception, right? The default rule is that whenever the zakah money is available, you have it, right? And the eligible zakah recipients are available waiting for you to pay zakat al-mal. The default rule is that you pay your zakat al-mal in full at once because zakah is like salah. Whenever it is salah time, we stop everything and we stand for the salah, is that correct? Whenever zakah is due, we stop everything and we pay zakat al-mal. You pay, you fulfill your duty toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by paying zakat al-mal. However, in the real life, it might, it might happen that according to your you know, discretion, you want to pay your zakah to one of your uh, relatives. And you are positive that that individual is not good in running his finance. So if you decide to give him the $10,000 at once, he might like spend that money wastefully. Can you hold the money? Okay, hold the money and give him on a monthly basis whatever is sufficient for him? Yes, you can. Well, according to your discretion and experience with him, even if you give him cash money like monthly basis, he is not that good. He might waste the money. Can you purchase in kind items? Can you pay the bills on his behalf and buy him some groceries and send them to his house? Yes, you can. So the bottom line here is that use your own discretion okay, to achieve the maslaha, whatever is like most beneficial of the zakah recipients, go for it. However, if you decide to put your money, zakah money aside, you need to tell your family members that, listen, this amount in this account or such and such amount is zakah. If something happened to me, I passed away, do not confuse that money with, I mean, this is haqqullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep it aside. 
This is zakah money paid as zakah. And the rest actually is your money. You can divide it according to the Islamic inheritance law. So they have to be like, you know, separated and clear for everybody that zakatul mal is, is here and my money is here. This zakah money is not mine. Okay, it's haqqullah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Is that clear? Okay. Barakallah, Fik Shaykh. There is tremendous need for zakat all over the world, obviously, and some countries more than others. Is there any obligation to pay it locally first before you pay overseas? Well, la, la, we can pay overseas without having to pay locally first. We do have a flexibility here. We do have flexibility. You know, transporting zakat from one locality to another is permissible, basically, to start with. However, you need to consider the, 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 the needy individuals in your local community. If you do have some fuqara and masakin, okay, pray with you in the same masjid, and they are desperate for money, it makes no sense whatsoever to ignore those brothers and sisters who are in need and to send your money or to give your money to the masjid or to like build a school or no. You need to start with individuals, okay? Individuals who are in need because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started with them. He said, إِنَّمَا الصَّدَقَاتُ لِلْفُقَرَاءُ وَالْمَسَاكِينَ And then way after that, وَفِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَبْنِ السَّبِيلِ So that, that, that order actually emphasizes the need that you start with the fuqara and the masakin. The faqir is the one who makes money, but the money is, is insufficient. The miskin is the one who's running out of resources. Some said the faqir is the one who asks publicly, and the miskin is the one who has that you know, you know, you know, self-respect or dignity, does not ask in public, whatever the difference might be. You start with the, with, with, with the needy individuals, okay, to make locally, right? And then after that, I mean, you have a lot of flexibility. If I'm in your position, I would just strike a balance. I mean, we American Muslims li live here in this society. We have to fulfill our duty to Islam and Muslims in the USA. We have a lot of Islamic organizations, Dur Ibadah, Masajid, we have colleges, we have universities, we have schools, we have civil rights organizations, we have youth organizations, we have political organizations. They all actually need, need our support. If you want to grow and enroot Islam in this society, we have to fulfill our you know, responsibility. And subhanAllah, in this country in particular, Akhi, money is the heart of the Islamic work. Wallahi. No money, no honey. Mafisha. <laughs> so we have to fulfill our duty. Now, you strike a balance. We do have some relatives overseas who are desperate you know, for our zakah. Send akhi, half your zakah overseas and half of it here you know, in, in the US. However, if you decide otherwise, Absolutely up to you. You can send your whole zakah overseas. You can keep it, you know, whole here. It's absolutely your, you know, your call. We do not have any fiqh, you know, restrictions other than the fact that you start with the local needy individuals and then after that you do whatever you want. Okay. Uh, it looks like it's a very disputable and debatable subject to discuss. So, uh, first of all, I would like to know where is a good place to have a long discussion about a lot of details and stuff when like uh, can we contact you or where do we go to because a lot of stuff like I hear here on flights confusing me if it and is I'm a, not convinced honestly to no. with it so if it is a business consultation actually I do provide business cons consultation as a side business for me okay. so I can give you the link and you can contact me through a link and Very we'll good. go from there uh, if it like, is fiqh or fatwa I can give you like Amjaf fatwa hotline and you, and you call Talk to a mufti live over the phone. Ask ask questions. Because one of the, uh, one of the like cross my mind always. Uh, let's say you no. Know, uh, I think zakat is the system in Islam, and God always gave us fard, and that benefit us or the community or something. So of course zakat is one of them, not to to hurt us with it. So I think uh, the way of zakat is when we talk about nisab will howl. So I'm. Not, that's why I'm not disagreeing. Like the gentleman said, and I heard say, you know, like you have five or ten thousand dollars the whole year, then you receive five thousand dollars last last day before, let's say Ramadan to Ramadan is the fiscal year of of zakat. Right. Then you receive five thousand dollars before in your hand. It wasn't in your hand until you receive in your hand. Then you it's uh, subject to zakat. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, no, it has to. Let's remember another year. So, uh, in that term. I want to say, like, uh, that's why you know, Nisab will howl. So if somebody never keep cash, in my case, let's say, I don't keep cash. I have $10,000 open business the next day to hire people, to hire Muslim people to work. I don't keep, I don't save money. I'm, my, my account in the bank always negative. So how is it going to get zakat? But I'm benefiting my community. 
Um, I think the idea of zakat is so people لا يكنزون الذهب والفضة. That's why with dhahab, تلبس الذهب وانت لا لا استعمل المرأة لا يفرض عليها الزكاة لأن لا استعملها لا تكنزها يعني. فنفس ال the same for the cash. If you're not using it, you're مثل عم تحرمها من the community. That's why you have to pay zakat. God says, or you go do something with it, help your community, or you pay zakat. Do you think that's a, that's a valid? Uh, Explanation well, if, you, <laughs> if, you, if you keep if you keep donating your money and supporting the community throughout the whole year, so much so that in the zakat you did, you do not even have any sab, and there is no asset that are equivalent or more than nisab, then you are zakat exempt because you paid way more than zakat. I'm not sure if I got that uh, that point. Well, there's the assets, and there is if like well, again what, what I asked you earlier, like if I'm not saving the money, but I'm always uh, uh, let's well, say starting might, new business, hiring people, and uh, well, and you, you don't might, you, you don't have cash, cash value, don't well, have cash. You, you have assets. Not, I don't know what the assets. Huh? Well, you might you might not have cash, but you are still zakat payer if you do have assets who are zakatable. Okay. okay. Uh, you have you have you have. Uh, you have uh, accessories business, you have uh, car dealership, you have phone, I mean, you have a lot of like, you know, phones or accessories or cars or groceries, right? In, in your grocery store, for example, right? You do not have cash money, but you do have zakatable assets. You have urul tijara. Well, you have to pay zakat. Right? It doesn't, I mean, you don't have to limit yourself to cash money. Any zakatable asset is to be charged zakat, Umar, based on what you already explained. But again, يعني, back to your question, أخي. if you are paying throughout the whole year long, right? So much so that in the zakat you did, you do not have even zakatable assets, no money, no like assets. Well, you are zakat exempt. No. So, so if you pay for politician, well, I'm asking, well, I'm coming. So if you if you pay for politician like Gretchen Whitmer, is it zakat? You can consider it. Eh? No. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. One more time on the 401k. So this is considered for everybody. It's a long-term investment, right? And it is kind of a business for those who really do not have a business. They're putting their money. It's not really right. saving money. He's investing it for as a business. So is the and I heard you saying Zakhlaq had an offy two opinions. Any whether. It's a long-term investment as a business growing. You might really, for the accessible profit of it, you pay? Or you, like, how comfortable are you of not paying for it? And well, because I would, it's a long-term yeah, investment. I feel, I feel like you're more comfortable adopting Amja uh, position, our fiqh council. Because okay, this is the big chunk of money that you have. And if you have hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of investment in your 401k mm. and you do not pay the account, then what else you have to pay the account? You see? This yeah. from one side. From the other side, this is a pure, straightforward investment. Every single year, the net amount or the market value of the investment is increasing on an annual basis. So, yeah. you know, for me, it makes a lot of sense that you find out how much you have an access to and you pay the account. But to Excuse yourself from paying the capital man on the total 401k or whatever investment that you have. I don't think okay, this is a mm. you know a valid fiqh opinion. Wallahu a'lam. Again, it's ishtihad. Allah a'lam. Shukran. Just giving zakat to a sister or a brother. You want to use sister. the mic, please? Giving zakat to the sister or a brother who's in need, like your own sister or a brother. Like your yes, you can. The only people that you need to avoid are the like ascendants and descendants like your parents and grandparents, your children and grandchildren. Those are not eligible zakah recipients because of the uh, like, like a mutual sponsorship responsibility between you and your parents and yourself and, and your kids, right? Otherwise, like your siblings, any other relatives, paternal, maternal, uncles, aunts, uh, cousins, anybody else actually, well, in fact, in fact, giving them zakat al-mal will be doubling the reward. Because according to the hadith of the Prophet 
هي صدقة وصلة. صلة الرحم having like good relationship with your family members and a zakat at the same time. So you should give them priority over others. Can you give your zakat al mal to your needy sibling, your brother or sister? Yes, you can. Of course you can. Okay. No, no. Hey, sister. I, I thought sister, انت فرد لازم تدفع عليها. It's okay. Yeah. Can you pay zakatul mal to pay off the loan of your son or your daughter? If that is, yeah, if that is something belongs to, to sponsoring them, for example, you did not take your responsibility in spending in your child in order for him to survive okay, and to have the, like, whatever he needs. He had to borrow money. Can you pay zakat? Okay, on his behalf to pay off the loan? No, you cannot. No, I understand. That's not the situation. Let's say that he's in um, uh, something. Student loan? No, no, no education. It's like uh, he needs uh, money. Judiciary? I do not have, uh, honestly, I do not have a specific answer because I need to investigate more. But let me give you an example. Someone gets married, okay, with, with, a, with a woman who does have uh, $100,000 student loans, right? And they just get married. So he gets married while she has that loan. Now, can he pay zakah, zakatul mal, to pay off her student loan? Yes, because that's something irrelevant to their marriage, okay? But if they have been married for, let's say, a few years, and he is not that generous, like he's so stingy, right? She had to borrow money to spend on herself to buy clothes and to buy transportation, food, and whatever. Can he pay zakat to pay off the loan? No, he cannot. Because, because of his shortcoming, she had to borrow. Okay, unlike if they got married and she like, came to that marital life with a package of $100,000 student loan. He, is, he, he was not responsible for it. You see what I'm saying? So this is, I mean, this is the qad, this is the standard. Does it apply to your particular question? Honestly, I do not know because I need to collect like more detailed information to say yes or no. Most probably, no. Most probably. Responsible for the regular expenses, anything that is irregular, anything that he can live without, Yet he had, I mean, he, like he decided to borrow money, right? Yes, you can pay zakah. Your dad or your mom, for example, example, is in debt for something that's irrelevant to you, sponsoring them. Can you pay your zakah, okay, on their behalf to pay off their loan? Yes, you can. If it is something, you know, related to your sponsorship responsibility toward them, no, you cannot, because basically you're supposed to sponsor your, your parents and so on and so forth. Okay. How, how much time we have, Adiktura, for the Salah? Are we done? Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Three minutes? Well, Eight I think... Nine. 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 If we can have one conversation, please, if you don't mind. Nine. Nine. Well, there is no, there is no one size fits all, unfortunately, here. Let's say that, you know, someone, like a, like a young professional, makes only $70,000. Another young professional makes uh, half a million dollars. We cannot equate or, or like treat them equally because whatever is considered extravagance for the $70,000 guy might not apply to the half a million dollars, you see? So it depends on the financial status, level of education, what kind of profession. It has to be taken like case by case basis. Okay, if I'm to drive like a half a million dollars or like a quarter million dollars car, that is that's an extravagance for me, right? Okay, uh, if somebody else who makes four or five million dollars a year and he drives half a million dollars in worth of a, a, a car, it's not extravagance for him. So it has to be taken 
case by case basis. Say it again, I'm sorry. Diamonds. No, 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 it's, it's only gold and silver. Only gold and silver. Anything like diamond and precious stones are not, uh, are not zakatim. How? Assalamu alaikum. Allah is here. You mentioned something talking about primary residence, non-commercial. So if I have a, a commercial building that I occupy, do I pay as a cat on the value of the building? You know, that's number one. Oh, number hold on, hold on. Commercial property that you occupy? That I occupy. In my well, office, it's not, for example. It's not, well, it's not, it's not commercial. I mean, if you live in it. Business, business. Like Iyadi, for example? Like Iyadi, yeah. Well. I own the Iyadi. Mm. Oh, you own it? Correct. Well, it's not the castle. It's not the castle. No, it's not. Yeah. How about if you have an interest in a business, like, you know, I mean, so, so do I pay zakat on just the, 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 the profit, the income that comes from the business, or I have to value You have the interest, business? you mean, you, you mean, you like mean equity? Co-owner, um, yeah, equity ah, in the business. interest in the river, no. No, 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 yeah. equity in the, in the... Well, it depends on the nature of the business. What kind of business? Is it, is it industrial? Is it commercial? Is it, I mean, what kind commercial of business? Commercial business. What kind of commercial business? Like, do you uh, buy and sell real estate? No, 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 like lab, for example. Lab, lab service, laboratory, yeah. laboratory. Yeah. Well, you pay the car on the on the on the oh, money only. The so all the machines that you use to run that lab actually are the car exempt. Are the car exempt? Yeah. Okay. One last thing for the. Like, hold on, Akhi. If it is an option to uh, like delay the salah, we can stay. I mean, I I I, I mean, I don't mind. <laughs> can we wait? Almost خلصنا. خفيف بدك زكاه البترول اي بترول من عند نعم. البترول يا اخي اويل اويل اند غاز بزنس يو باي يو باي 20% اوكي ويل اونلي ذا اونر اوف ذا بزنس نيدز تو باي 20% زكاه الركاز اند ذس از اند ذس از جاست لايك وان ابروتش اور وان اوبينيون سات اجريد ابون اف يو ورك فور ان اويل اند غاز كومباني يو دونت هاف تو باي 20% زكاه يو باي اونلي 2.5% ان يور ان يور انكم ان يور سالري رايت well, this is, this is a public, public property. There's no zakat on it. No. Well, no zakat on it in a sense that, that the government actually is not owned by individual, unless you are referring to Muslim, like, or, or regimes in the Muslim world where the whole country is owned by one individual. Yeah, well, that, that individual in mind does not even care about zakat. So even if we... <laughs> no, no politics in Jama'a. Last question. If I, uh, I pay through, uh, let's say, Mercy USA, and then uh, this is a U.S. Uh, government, and I get uh, tax deductible, let's say I pay $10,000, and then I'm going to um, uh, deduct 3000 going to come back to me. So I didn't pay $10,000 for Zakah. Can you please? I'm, I'm one paying, more time. Uh, I paid the $10,000 to support uh, the local Islamic school. Okay. This is a tax detected uh, organization. Right. So some part of this money is going to be detaxed from, uh, detected from my tax. Right. So I'm going to get some money, money back from the government. Yeah. And if you don't like that money, just, just give it to me. I mean, I'll be more than happy to take it. <laughs> Very simple example, income tax return for those who have low income. They receive money from the government. Well, that's a kind of income. So you just add it up to whatever you have, and if you still have that money till next year, you pay the count. Likewise, no. Allah is equal here. No. 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 Allah is Dr. Man, it was a great, mashallah, informative lecture. Inshallah, 